social conservatives and social liberals. The social and political conservatives tend to favor the more autocratic authoritarian regimes in the Arab world. The Arab Spring seems to them a threat. The status quo with Egypt and other countries can be maintained, in their view, only with authoritarianism. The liberals in Israel, the liberal press, especially Haaretz, is more in favor of the democratic process in Egypt. Now let us turn from the Jewish population to the Palestinian population. Since the Egyptian revolution in January and February of last year, the Palestinians have been involved in the process because both Hamas and the PLO, who are divided, have a stake in what happens in Egypt. Egypt borders the Gaza Strip. Egypt has been trying to mediate between Hamas and the PLO. Egypt is talking about forming some kind of unity, political unity, if not an actual unity government. So when I look at the press and listen to the radio in the West Bank and in Gaza, there too there are conservatives and liberals. The conservatives want the Muslim Brotherhood to triumph, and the liberals feel that the secularists have a better chance of negotiating Israeli concessions. So that's the um, larger picture. Curiously, what's occupying Israel this week in foreign policy, a report about the Turkish raid, not the Turkish raid, I'm sorry, the Israeli raid on the Turkish ship last year. The government report is very critical of the, of, of the Israeli army and hierarchy, and that seems to be occupying the press. I, I imagine after the Sabbath, we'll have a lot of reporting stop for 24 hours. There'll be a lot more said about the Egyptian situation. I hmm. hope that gives the uh, overall picture, but I do want to introduce the Palestinians into the equation here. and the separate from the Arabs of Israel. So there are many players. Can I ask a question uh, of, uh, of, of Shalom? Uh, what is the thinking there about uh, the possible interplay between a, a Muslim Brotherhood-led government, although we don't know now if we're going to, to get that, and, and Hamas? Is the feeling that this is a, you know, an unholy alliance that will give uh, Hamas more power? Or is there some thinking that uh, because uh, you know, this Egyptian government is uh, not going to want to be held accountable for terrorist acts uh, by Hamas, and because Hamas is, uh, essentially was born of the, of the Muslim Brotherhood, that in some ways this could have some type of... Um, uh, maybe moderating uh, influence on, on Hamas. What's the thinking over there on that? Right, David, thank you so much for answering, for asking that question and in a way answering it. Also because it's the last position that you suggested that uh, I noticed on Bitter Lemons and other um, highly thought of websites in the last few days that if the Muslim Brotherhood comes into power, it can be a moderating influence on Hamas. Observers already see Hamas as making gestures to the PLO, which would include, if not exactly concessions to Israel, then some kind of reluctance, accept, reluctant acceptance of Israel. So the more that the Muslim Brotherhood is involved in the Egyptian political process and by extension in the international political process, the more Hamas, which as you say is born of and is proud to be of the Muslim Brotherhood, could engage in a similar process. Of course, Ya'alon and other, he's uh, the uh, former head of the army, he's on the political right, he's warning against the Muslim Brotherhood and says that it will be a radicalizing view, a radicalizing uh, power in terms of Hamas, but most of the Israeli liberals and pundits disagree. 